In easily the most fun game of Week 8, the Seahawks played the Texans. There were multiple lead changes, there were many large plays on both sides, and it was a great quarterback battle between these two teams. Before I started this analysis, I was planning on looking at Hopkins' huge 200-yard performance. However, when I rewatched the game, I couldn't resist looking at Wilson. All game, he put the team on his back and was clearly the person I should be talking about. In this game, he did a great job of going through his reads. He felt pressure and he moved around the pocket. He escaped when Clowney or the other pass rushers collapsed their line and gave his receivers more time to make plays. He also used his legs smartly to pick up first downs on his own. His first touchdown to Paul Richardson showed everything you need in a franchise quarterback. Out of empty sit shotgun, Wilson instantly looks to his right for Doug Baldwin. It was second and 10, so Wilson was looking to complete a short pass just to make the third down more manageable. Seeing the linebacker drop into his throwing lane, he tucked the ball and scrambled. Clowney was getting close, so he moved outside the pocket into his left. This scramble bought enough time for Richardson to run from the opposite side of the field all the way across the goal line for the score. The next big play happened in the middle of the second quarter. It was second and eight, and Wilson lined up in eye formation. The Seahawks ran a three-man route combination while the Texans played cover one defense. Versus cover one, which is a middle of the field close formation or MOFC, Tanner McAvoy is taught to attack the seam between the deep safety and the numbers. Darbo, on the other hand, is running a go route and he incorrectly took an inside release against the cornerback. This almost ruined the play as there were two receivers in the same spot. Darbo was supposed to be near the sideline, which would open his throw even more. Regardless of his bad route, Wilson's pass was so perfectly placed that it didn't matter. He threw the ball over McAvoy's inside shoulder and he was able to bring it in for a 53-yard gain. Now, a lot of people have really shat all over Daryl Bevel this season. They claimed his play calling is predictable and he isn't getting the most out of his players. Now, I think there are things he can do better, but I want to give him credit for an awesome play design. In the third quarter, the Seahawks line up in I formation once again. Off of play action, the fullback sprints wide open to the seam. Not a single defensive player saw this coming and Madden was able to torch his defense for a 66-yard gain. From my vantage point, pretty much everything went right for Wilson. In this play, Clowney stripped him from behind, but Luke Wilson had the awareness to recover the ball for the first down. In my film study, I honestly spent a good amount of time looking for mistakes or really any bad examples to counterbalance this video. However, I really couldn't find anything major. Even in his missed touchdown to Thomas Rawls, you could argue that the running back didn't maintain his angle and that since the ball hit him in the hands, he has to bring it in. Also, for his interception in the fourth quarter, you can argue that Wilson threw his pass late. I do want to point out, though, that Paul Richardson also ran a terrible route. Wilson was expecting him to cut more sharply to the sideline, but Richardson drifted and allowed the cornerback to undercut the pass. Ideally, Wilson should have moved on to the fullback, but I don't think this interception was entirely his fault. In this game, Wilson was responsible for 482 out of the total 485 yards. The Seahawks managed a grand total of 3 yards on 17 rush attempts. Some will be quick to blame the offensive line, but sometimes it was the fault of the running back. Rawls had a draw play on 1st and 20, and in this situation, this is almost always a guaranteed 5 yards. However, he predetermined his cut to the right side and was taken down for a loss after Jermaine Defetti was beaten. Again, look at the giant hole in the middle of the line and tell me that he wasn't supposed to take it. This is clearly his fault, and he was the reason why this play went negative. In my opinion, the Seahawks' running problems continue to be their Achilles' heel. On another run in the middle of the second quarter, there is a clear miscommunication between the fullback and the tight end. The Seahawks run outside zone, and it looks like both thought they were responsible for the linebacker while they left Jadavian freaking Clowney unblocked. From the end zone view, you can see Trey Madden's eyes look towards the linebacker for proof. He simply was not expecting Clowney to be in the backfield. The final play we'll end with was Wilson's game-winning touchdown. The Seahawks have a 3 by one set on the right side, with Graham running a seam route. The Texans are in cover 3, with number 21 playing as the deep safety. In cover 3, and with 3 receivers on the right, rookie linebacker Zach Cunningham has to carry the seam route. Instead, he completely let Graham run free, and this is the reason why he's so open. In summary, Wilson continues to be everything for the Seahawks. In my opinion, their inability to run the ball will be a problem at some point in the season. 
Now, they did just acquire Dwayne Brown, and he should help in pass protection, but one player can't turn around this offense. All right, well, that's all I have for this one. The sponsor of this breakdown is BetDSI.com. They want to offer any viewer of this channel a free $25 wager if you sign up. Go ahead and use promotion code BREAK25, and your next bet will be completely free. This week, my number one bet is the Bengals at plus 3.5 versus the Jags. While I think Jacksonville is the better team, I also think that the Bengals defense should keep this game close. Don't be surprised if it ends in a game-winning field goal. Thanks again for watching, and feel free to leave a donation through my Patreon account. I really appreciate all the support and comments you guys leave for me, and as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.